Hi, this is Cale Clark with the Faith Explained Institute, thefaithexplained.com. We're here in Ein Kerem, in the Judean countryside in the hills of Judea. And this is where a very significant biblical event took place, the Visitation. I'm going to tell you uh, how this all fits together with the Old Testament. You know, one thing that St. Augustine said, it was one of his famous sayings, he said, the Old Testament is in the New Revealed, and the New Testament is in the Old Concealed. And so really the two fit together. All of scripture basically speaks one word. Christ is on every page of the Bible, old and new, ultimately. And one of the keys to understanding how the Bible fits together, old and new, is in this concept called typology. Typology. I don't know if you've ever heard that word before, typology. But types, you know, you've heard of typing, of course, and, and when human authors you know, write novels and when they write stories, they sometimes use what are called literary devices. Foreshadowing, like you read a murder mystery, who did it? Clues are dropped and you can kind of see what's going on there. Well, God, when he wrote the history of the world, he also wrote it using some of these techniques, if you could say. God writes the world the way human beings write with words. And one of the devices that he likes to use is typology. And what that means is that People, places, events, festivals, details from the Old Testament often represent greater people, places, events, and things in the New Testament. And uh, there, that's called a type, okay? So we talked about one already on this trip, how Adam is a type of Christ, okay? Christ is the new Adam. That's one that's mentioned in the scriptures uh, by St. Paul himself. And we see, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, how Mary is a type of the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant. And we talked about the Ark. It contained, of course, the Ten Commandments, uh, the priestly staff of Aaron, which sprouted, and also a jar of the manna, the miracle bread from heaven that fed God's people on their journey to the Promised Land, on their pilgrimage. And we're here on pilgrimage in Israel. Well, in the Old Testament, in 2 Samuel chapter 6, it talks about how King David brought the Ark to Jerusalem. But something happened along the way that was a little disturbing. Uh, as they were, they just defeated the Philistine army, and as they were bringing the ark, it began to be unsteady. Uh, it was being drawn by horses on ox cart, and it began to tip over. And one of the Israelites named Uzzah reached out and tried to steady the ark, but it was forbidden for him to touch the ark. And immediately, God struck him down. Boom. And David was completely freaked out at that moment. He said, whoa, what is going on here? He knew that you know, he had his faults. He was a sinful man. And he said, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? His plan was he was going to bring it to Jerusalem, bring it to his house, essentially. But, but can he really do that? This is a dangerous thing. So he said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a little experiment. There's a friend of mine who lives in the hill country of Judea named Obed-Edom, the Gittite. And I'm going to take the ark to his house, and I'm going to see what happens to this guy. And I'm going to come back in a little while, and if he's still alive, well then maybe it'll be safe for me to bring the ark back to Jerusalem. So that's what he does. He goes to Obed-Edom, gives him the ark, take care of this for me, I'll be back. And then he comes back, and not only is Obed-Edom still alive, his family is blessed beyond compare. And so David says, now I know, I can bring the ark home, everything will be fine. So this is that famous scene in the Old Testament, and again, you can look, up, look this up, 2 Samuel 6. David is bringing the ark back to Jerusalem, and what does he do? He puts on the garb of a priest, even though he wasn't a priest, he was, he was the king, but not a priest. And he danced before the ark. And his wife, Michal, when she sees this, says, what are you doing? You're embarrassing yourself. And he says, I'm going to become even more undignified than this. I am going to make Mary before the Lord. And so David danced before the ark. Now fast forward to the New Testament Gospel of Luke. And this is the gospel that we heard today. During those days, Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb. And who is that infant? John the Baptist, right? In the womb of Elizabeth. 
dancing before the Lord, who is, of course, you know, Mary's like a, a living tabernacle, you know, and, and, and the Lord is within her, and, she, and he is dancing before the Lord. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. If anyone tries to tell you that the Hail Mary is not scriptural, there it is right there. That's the first half of the prayer. And she says this, Elizabeth says, How does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? This is exactly what David said about the ark. How can the ark of the Lord come to me? So very, very clearly, Luke, the author of Luke, is, is pointing out that Mary is the Ark of the New Covenant. He's clearly drawing from this Old Testament scripture that he knows so well. This is a new and greater Ark. Elizabeth again, for at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And so there you have it. This is one way that we can understand the scriptures through this use of what's called typology.